Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Ayurveda with Noreen podcast. If you are enjoying this podcast, I ask that you follow me so that we can continue to cultivate awareness around the wisdom of Ayurveda, as well as spotlight the awesome individuals who are committed to bringing it out there. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by an esteemed guest, Dr. Suhas Shirsagar, a world-renowned Ayurvedic physician and medical astrologer who hails from a family of traditional Vedic healers in India. Suhas holds a BA in Ayurvedic medicine and has completed a three-year residency as an MD, a doctorate in Ayurvedic internal medicine at Pune University in India. Dr. Suhas is a compassionate healer and expert clinician who directs the Ayurvedic Healing and Integrative Wellness Clinic in Santa Cruz, California. He is a sought after speaker and lecturer who travels extensively teaching courses on Ayurveda, training doctors and providing Ayurvedic consultations for thousands of patients. Dr. Suhas is the author of several books on Ayurveda and optimum health, including Change Your Schedule, Change Your Life, Ayurveda, A Quick Reference Guide, Enchanting Beauty, Ancient Secrets to Inner and Outer and Lasting Beauty, The Hot Belly Diet, A 30-Day Ayurvedic Plan to Reset Your Metabolism, Lose Weight and Restore Your Body's Natural Balance to Heal Itself, The Art and Science of Vedic Counseling, co-authored with David Frawley, and Panchakarma, The Art and Science of Detoxification and Rejuvenation, which is what we will focus on in today's interview. Welcome, Dr. Suhas. Thank you, Noreen. Very happy to be here and very happy with the purpose and the mission that uh, you have undertaken to carry the message and spread the wisdom of Ayurveda for, I would say, enlightened living. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Suhas. Well, let's jump right in. Um, The title of your book is Panchakarma, the Ayurvedic Art and Science of Detoxification and Rejuvenation. Um, do you want to hold up a copy of your book yes. for our viewers? This is the new book that I co-authored together with my lovely wife, Dr. Manisha, and my son, Dr. Manas, who is also uh, a product of Mahashi International University. He did his master's right. there and has joined our practice. So it's an excellent book. It's, a, it's almost a summary of last 25 to 30 years of our practice doing Panchakarma around the globe, actually. Awesome. Uh, and you um, you do have a Panchakarma Center, or you have a health clinic Absolutely. in in Santa Cruz, California. We have a Panchakarma Center, which is a very authentic, full fledged Panchakarma Center, sure. which is much more uh, therapeutic based, where every treatment is individualized based upon the person, their body type, their condition, their challenges with health, their dosha, and dhatu imbalances. So it's very tailor-made specific, but all very authentic treatments. Awesome. So yeah, I just want to jump right into the book, um, which was a wonderful book. And I think it was super accessible to Westerners in terms of what is Panchakarma, what does it do? Um, And first, I want to touch on a couple of points in the introduction which was by Dr. Sheila Patel, who is the medical director or was the medical director of Chopra Global. Um, And some of the questions that she asked was, how do healthcare providers best translate and carry the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda into the medical world? So I'm wondering about your thoughts on that more, that broader question before we jump into Panchakarma specifically. Well, I think as a clinician and as I train a lot of doctors and uh, so many of my colleagues like Dr. Patel, that feels that people have a toxic body and their reaction to chronic diseases is based upon rampant toxicity that they have inherent in the system itself. And we are painfully identifying these trends. We call it as obesinogenic lifestyle, carcinogenic lifestyle. There are certain foods which are labeled like that. There are certain lifestyle practices which are labeled like that. So we are dumping a lot of impurities and toxins in the carpet of our body where the cells and tissues are becoming devitalized. They are losing their innate intelligence. And technically modern medicine has no clue how to cleanse and purify the body because no matter how much evolved we are in surgical field and medicine, but 
there is no way for a patient to participate in their cellular detoxification or purification. And I think that is the strength of Ayurveda. That is exactly what she is referring to, that panchakarma, which is more of a deep tissue cleanse. And when we do that, we often see that no matter what chronic disease is, people respond to that much better. The flow of prana, the flow of cellular intelligence is restored. There's detoxification pathways that we so far now only identify as liver as an organ for detoxification, but skin, gut. Uh, yeah, kidney, awesome. Breath. Well, I think, I think what I'm hearing you say is that um, in terms of carrying Ayurveda, this ancient wisdom into modern medicine, our, me our modern medical world is that is super important with Panchakarma or Ayurvedic treatments in general, um, that we require patients and clients to really be participants in their own health. Absolutely. They have to participate in their own health. They have to carve out time to do something. And there's a term that I used in the book called as healing crisis. So you have to feel a little bad before you start feeling good. Right. So when you're doing castor oil cleanse, when you are abstaining from certain food, you are, you are observing certain dietary do's and don'ts. This is all something that you will have to do in order to challenge yourself, in order to participate yourself, in order to sync your internal rhythms with the cosmic rhythms in alliance with the time for the body to allow the detoxification to happen. So it almost feels as if that the healer and the healer, the patient and the doctor and the client and the doctor together, they have to work out and create space and time in order for the body to participate in that. And I think there is nothing like this that exists in Western medicine. We talk about massages and stuff, but panchakarma is may, way different than a regular massage. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now in the foreword of your book, it refers to the words detoxification and purification. Um, how are they the same and how are they different? Well, detoxification is just getting rid of something. Right. And purification is rejuvenating the cells and tissues at the same right. time, okay? You, you have to tonify them. After you get rid of the impurities, you can't leave them dry, thirsty, and parchy. You have to replenish them. You have to oleate them. You have to soften them. You have to hydrate them. You have to improve their functioning, which has become a little bit diminished. And now they are functioning even better. Okay. And I think it's a very interesting thing, and you have been doing this for some time, Norin, and you will you will understand that as a as a very simple logic that I explain in the book. That aging is nothing but dehydration. Aging is drying. Whenever your juices, enzymes, hormones, cells, tissues, everything becomes dry, stiff, shriveled, thirsty, parchy. It's all hasten accelerated aging process. Mm -hmm. And anything that reverses that order, rehydration, oleation, lubrication, softening, saponification, um, becoming more flexible, something more pliable, softening is all reversal of aging. Awesome. And every cell and tissue, as it becomes dehydrated, dry, and stiff, it's accelerated aging with wrinkles and anything that softens it, it's reversal of aging, especially in the sensory faculties. From an Ayurvedic perspective, aging is, is okay. all about your sensorial health. Okay, If your senses can carry out a good function, decent function till you're 70, 80, 90 years of age, it means you have reversed the aging process. It has less to do with wrinkles on the skin. So your eyes can see, your ears can hear things. You can recollect what happened 50 years ago. You can carry out a decent conversation. All of that is all sensory acuity and vitality. And these are the areas which are high friction points that we burn out and generate a lot of heat in there. Blinking right. the eyes, nose, ears, mouth, they get dry and thirsty. So on a daily basis, oleation, lubrication, oil pulling, mm -hmm. oil, nose drops, ear drops, oil massage on the skin. Yeah, the, the all earth. rehydration, relubrication, sure. softening, reversal yeah. of aging, maintaining the clarity and vitality of the senses for a greater part in your life is what Panchakarma is all about. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, that's, that actually brings me to a question that I, I didn't write down, but um, do you view, um, I mean, many times we'll view aging as a chronic disease and of course it's not, uh, it shouldn't be. It's a natural disease. Ayurveda has described it as a natural disease because it, it, it's its course of time. It's the 100% mortality that we talk about, isn't it? You sure. take the first breath, you're going to take your last breath at some point. Of course, of course. Um, so do you view um, Panchakarma as an anti-aging therapy? 100%. Okay. It is, it is not reversal of aging, but definitely slows down the aging process. Okay. Softens, lubricates, prevents you from the onslaught of chronic diseases, and it it adds longevity. It means the 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 age old expression in the classical sutras and shlokas say you have a bamboo stick or twig, and then you keep on oiling the the stick, and then you can bend it and twist and turn and create different shapes of that the way you want. It becomes stiff wood becomes completely flexible by oiling it, by softening it, lubricating it. So the body will attain flexibility and will create that, that degree of flexibility. And we're not talking about flexibility only in the body, we're talking about sure. the flexibility in the mind. Yeah, yeah, because so, so is, important is, because as people age, many will become, seem to be, their worlds become smaller and smaller, at least in the West, and many times, there's increased rigidity in the mind. So that's, those are really good points. And, um, and skin is the biggest source of neurohormones and neurotransmitters in the body. There's the sensation of feeling good, generalized feeling of well-being can be generated just through uh, a massaging of the skin. We do that for babies and there's enough research published on that, feeling love, affection, bonding. Actually, the Sanskrit word for love is sneha. Sneha means oil. Yeah, you know, I know, I know that oil is a big part of um, daily practices in Ayurveda and also Panchakarma. Um, but let's dive in a more more deeply into Panchakarma and exactly what it is. Um, one of the things that you said in your book is that many of your patients gain weight during the most demanding years of their careers. And what do you think the reason for that is? And then they want to do Panchakarma. For weight loss or the other The reason issues. is that they they are they are not able to follow the normal healthy patterns of diet and lifestyle. They have a mismanaged stress, which is stressing out the system. It makes their agni or digestive system flicker and become weak and sluggish. And they are eating, but they're not digesting well. And there are tits and bits and pockets of chronic armor that gets lodged into different parts of the body. So slowly the system becomes slow and sluggish and it leads to abdominal adiposity. It leads to weight gain. It leads to almost a feeling of, almost a feeling of feeling dull and tired and exhausted throughout the day. And I see these kind of patients a lot in my practice. And I think when we, when we meet these people, we slowly put them onto an AMA reducing protocol. We improve their digestion, we improve their agni. We slowly engage them into a dietary lifestyle pattern of a gentle detoxification as a pre-panchakarma preparation, have them come for a cleanse, learn a few things about themselves, renew, re-motivate them for a healthier optimum lifestyle. And they go back and slowly start changing the way they have been leading their life. They can still go back to their jobs, earn the same amount of money, lead a decent life and become even more successful and more happier. And I see that every day in my practice when people come sure. and participate in Panchakarma programs. Awesome. Um, you, you also use the term low level toxicity in people's bodies. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I think the fact is we live in a toxic world. We live in a toxic world where, where nobody wants to eat anything bad or toxic, but there are so many chemical contaminants that we are exposed to in our food. We, we, I'm talking about herbicides, pesticides, xenobiotics, which acts like uh, pseudo-antibiotics, xenoestrogens, which mimic like hormones, and they are fake hormones, even coming from plastics. 
So xenoestrogen, xenobiotics, pesticides, partially hydrogenated oils, exposure to heavy metals that is coming from mercury, lead, petrochemicals, residues, molds, bacteria, fungus, high fructose corn syrup, food additives, artificial colors, preservatives, water contamination from industry, farming, it all goes, even pharmaceuticals that gets into the public drinking water, air pollution from fossil fuels, burning of cars, burning of fuels from cars, drugs, nutritional supplement overload that stagnates the system, and a poor indoor quality of air that what you're breathing in. So whether you live in a city um, like, like Los Angeles or places like that, or you live in a, uh, in a cold apartment in New York somewhere where you're blocking all the windows and you are just breathing the recirculated air in the apartment, this is all slowly going in. It all makes your way in the system itself. There was a research that came out that um, they took the cord blood of the newly born baby. As soon as the baby is born, they cut the cord and they take the blood sample. And in that cord blood, they found about 287 industrial chemicals that were toxins and poisonous right. in the cord yeah. blood. The right. average yeah. number of pharmaceuticals that we find in public drinking water in significant concentration is over 100 different pharmaceuticals that mm -hmm. you can trace in the public drinking water. Many of the cosmetic that people think is all healthy, what you wash your hair, shampoos, creams, lotions, lipsticks, makeup. And there are about 400, 500 cosmetic products which are sold in, in United States, which are actually banned in other countries. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you make a great point that, I mean, essentially, um, we can reduce the level of toxins in our life, but we can't avoid them entirely is what I'm hearing you say. I think you have to recurrently cleanse and purify and you have to lead an organic lifestyle in order to shop smartly, shop, uh, uh, select the things which are clean and healthy. And you can do still little because no matter where you are, who you are, you still end up in eating one or two times outside in the restaurant where you don't have control over where they are buying, what they're using, what kind of oils are being used and things. So you're still exposed to that. You sit in an airplane, you go to different places. So there are still so many things that you are ingesting from right. every possible ways. But yeah. you're minimizing the toxic load by, by doing regular panchakarma. Awesome. Um, I know in Ayurveda and in Panchakarma, we talk about the word ama. Is that the same as toxins? Ama is residual metabolic toxins. There are two types of toxins that we talk about. One is endogenous toxins that you create within the body. Okay, So you ate say good, healthy, organic food and you were not able to digest it. That makes you feel bloated, gassy, sluggish, tired, and you ended up in digesting 70% of that food, 30% remain undigested in the system, which makes you dull, bloated, distended. And slowly that pile of undigested food starts percolating, going through the lymphatics and getting accumulated as a cellular debris. That is what we call it as an endogenous toxin. What I spoke earlier, about, about the pesticides, herbicides, the cosmetic product, the impurities that you inhale, breathe, are exogenous toxins that you take in from outside sources. And when you combine both, it can become a real big mess in the body itself with a combination of endogenous and exogenous toxins. Awesome, awesome. Um, Actually, another interesting note, these toxins are classified in three ways nowadays in modern medicine. And they are very interesting because that even highlights the importance of panchakarma even more. They are carcinogenic, which promote cancer. Mm -hmm. They are mutagenic, which creates a lot of gene mutations, which leads to cascade of chronic diseases. And they are reprotoxic, which affects your reproductive function. So it affects your fertility issues. It affects your sexual potency and virility. And okay. there are so many foods and toxins that are labeled as CMR toxins, carcinogenic, mutagenic, and reprotoxic. All right. Awesome. Um, 
Tell me, just from a broad perspective for our viewers and listeners, what Panchakarma is and what someone can hope to come away with once they've completed Panchakarma. Well, I think um, Panchakarma is a series of treatments for detoxification. What it means is that you are slowly identifying what you are doing and you are engaging into reducing certain foods that are too heavy, too cheesy, too mucusy, too difficult to digest. And you are lightening the level of the quality and the quantity of the food that you are eating so that you are increasing your metabolic ability to digest whatever is there inside as residual impurities. So you give the body a chance to digest the ama or metabolic impurities by increasing the agni by eating less, by drinking hot water, by drinking herbal teas, by doing some in-house gentle uh, dietary lifestyle modification. That is a part one, phase one of panchakarma, which is pre-panchakarma preparation. And then yeah. you come to a clinic where after you have done the initial cleanse, we have you undergo a series of different treatments. So people come for five days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days, in which they receive two to three hours of series of treatment, which includes massages, steam, poultices, enemas, shirodharas, uh, nasya, which are drops in the nose, drops in the ears, Karnapurana, variety of different treatments like Katibasti, Pizicheli. Um, there are about 39 different treatments that we do depending upon what the imbalance is. So for those five, seven days or 14 days, people receive those treatments, which includes enema on an everyday basis. So every day they receive some kind of an enema, which is either oil-based or water-based enema. And then after they finish the in-house treatment, they go home with a post-panchakarma kind of a plan, which they slowly reintroduce the food back into their diet. They are given some intelligent foods, which are working as a rasayana to tonify the system. So whatever the depletion has happened, we rebuild the system, we increase the agni so that you can digest the food. And the whole process sometimes takes about a month, um, somewhere close to six to eight weeks to complete. But in that two months, you have regained a lot of better perspective about what kind of food you should be eating, how you should be living. Uh, you have a little spiritual outlook about yourself and your life when you're going through the treatment because you're also getting rid of emotional armor and the emotional impurities and toxins also, while the body is getting rid of physical impurities and toxins. So I think all in all, it is something where your participation is needed, your attention is needed. It is something that you cannot do in a jiffy. There is no drive through panchakarma or something that you can do in a quickie manner. You have to right. engage and always work with someone who understands what they're doing. Awesome. Um, I know you, well, first of all, you know, uh, in the US, people are going to say, well, why panchakarma? Why should I do panchakarma as a detox versus a juice cleanse or some other kind of detox? How do you respond to questions like that? Absolutely, because I think who can detox is everybody can detox. So there are what, what we see in my clinic, they are called as healthy maintenance cleanses, okay? Right. Healthy cleanses is just engaging in biotransformation. So they are healthy eaters, athletes, yogis. What they do is a seasonal cleanse. And that's the reason why they should be doing panchakarma because every three months, the season changes gears. There's a seasonal change that affects us. The doshas are on the move. The body is, is changing. There's a predominance of different doshas. So if you want to prevent an increased or decreased dosha affecting you negatively, that is when you should engage into what we call it as a healthy cleansing, which is a seasonal cleanse. And would, and, you say, few, and would you say particularly in the fall and the spring? Spring and fall. There are four okay. dates four right. dates that we have on the calendar. So there's a summer solstice, winter solstice, fall equinox, and spring equinox. Those are the four dates that we have in calendar. And so you said the doshas, the doshas um, are on the move. Are usually on the move in that period of time. So why is that a more delicate time for our health and why is it important to do a cleanse at the change of the seasons or the solstice, the winter and summer? 
very good uh, question. Equinox and very good question. Yeah. And we often see that people yeah. get sick during the change of season. And the reason why they happen because the doshas are on the move. And usually, for example, like right now in the middle of summer, if someone wants to do a panchakarma, I have to soften, lubricate, and bring those doshas in the main channels of circulation with a lot of intense prep work right. in order to drag them out of their locations. But when we're talking about a seasonal change, they're already on the move. And okay, okay. So yeah. you're saying that when they're, when the, uh, just like the seasons are, there's a lot of movement at the change of the seasons, that there's a lot of movement in the doshas so that it's, it's easier, the treatments, it's easier to bring the toxins out. That's much easier. Okay. Much That's easier. great. Because That's the body awesome. is going through transition. And if right. you they select that, for example, spring cleanse, there's kapha, which is, which is coming out. All the winter accumulation that you have done in, sure. in December, January, February, all that kapha becomes liquefied and start coming out in spring. And you should use that blood of that kapha coming out by doing a kapha pacifying panchakarma that will become easier for that. Okay, awesome. Um, I know you give a lot of emphasis on the book in the book and and i'm sure you do at your clinic as well um on preparing properly preparing for panchakarma and the importance of that uh and that preparation process could take up to a month uh maybe a little longer um could you speak to that in terms of why someone who hasn't properly prepared that panchakarma could actually be harmful for them yeah. Or not effective, at least. Well, there are quite a few people that I see in my practice which are less healthy. Means they are what we call it as mildly toxic. They're drinking two or three cups of coffee every day. They enjoy their wine every evening or they consume uh, weekend alcohol a lot. They have a sedentary lifestyle. Or there are people who are completely unhealthy and they have terrible diet, which is... Uh, heavy, unhealthy diet, they don't exercise, they're exposed with a lot of environmental pollutants and toxins. So when we want to prepare these people for panchakarma, it's very important as a purva karma, as a preparation, for them to really understand that they have to stay away from certain foods. They have to drink certain specific teas to increase the heat and the thermoregulation in the body where there's a gentle amount of vasodilation and you are slowly releasing some of the impurities through stool, urine, kidney, and sweat as, as the pathways. So that preparatory part is so important. If you don't do that, then the doshas are still stuck where they are. And then you have them come through the clinic and go through the panchakarma where there's nothing there in the gut that is flowing in there. You have to prepare where you're allowing those rivers to flow in the gut so that you can purge them out from the nearest possible exit. And when that activity has not happened, then that excess load of cleansing actually makes them have many side effects. They feel right. depleted, they feel rashy, they feel headachy, they feel uh, as if the body wants to get rid of it, but they feel stuck. And sometimes that, that effect of not preparing well can linger for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I have refused many people who have suddenly come and they have planned and they say, oh, last time I spoke with you and you gave me to follow all these diet and preparation and everything. And I was going to do that. But on my work, they told me to go on a Europe trip for something. And I just came back yesterday and I didn't want to miss my Panchakarma appointment. So I want to start the treatment today. And I had to send them back. If you haven't done the prep, you can't do it because you can't do it in a rush because you have time to do it. It depends upon whether yeah. the body is ready to do it. It's like the classical explanation Taraka has given is about a mango. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trying to squeeze out juice from an unripe mango. Right. It's just not effective. It's not yeah. effective. You have to let yeah. it soften, you have to moisture until it becomes nice and ripe and yellow and you can smell it that it's ready. You pop it up and squeeze, it comes up. Right. Yeah, it sounds like uh, this pre-treatment, what you call, what's called Purva, Purva Karma, Purva, Purva karma um, that this is the beginning of the detox. 
And, and there are it two happens types at of home. Toxins. Going it back happens. to this concept, there are two types of toxins. Some of them are water soluble, and right. some of them are oil soluble, fat soluble. Right. And panchakarma is probably the only technique that I know, and many modern medical doctors would agree, that addresses both types of toxins. And you are talking about why should not I do a juice cleanse or this or that? Because the fat soluble toxins will not come out. They will not release the body just by juice cleanse. It will right. come out through internal oleation and external oleation only. Mm. And these are really problematic toxins. These are really problematic toxins, PCBs, um, and right. like a different pesticides. And actually there was a study published at MIU uh, earlier by John Pagan and um, uh, his colleagues, which talked about 43% reduction in the, in the lipophilic toxins, which are fat soluble toxins with panchakarma which is enormous. There is nothing that you can find right now, which is as effective as panchakarma to get rid of the fat soluble toxins. You can, you can do fasting, you can do juicing, you can drink herbal waters and hot waters. It can get rid of some water soluble toxins, but it cannot get rid of the stubborn heavy metals, PCBs that are stuck in the body. Only oil will soften it and Another important thing is when you internally oleate and lubricate the system, then you release the toxins without damaging the carpet of your body. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Because yeah. imagine that you, that you pour some honey in a, in a steel bowl, okay? Right. You're, you pour some honey in a steel bowl mm -hmm. and you're trying to drain every bit of honey into some other bowl, it doesn't come up. But what you do is that stainless steel bowl, you apply a little sesame oil and oleate and then pour honey. And then you empty the bowl, the whole thing comes up without letting it stuck to any of the, the margins of the, the metal. Right, and yes. Lubricate the system, the doshas come out without damaging the fabric of the body, the cells and the tissues of the body. Right, they come out, it's, it's, a, it's a smoother release. Uh, smoother release and it's just like you're now lubricating, maintaining that softness because when you do a harsh water enema saline enema coffee enema it's good for cleansing but it leaves the body dry and depleted sure that's sure. not the aim of it yeah well let's let's talk about the toxins like, that are let's talk about the toxins that are um in the body's adipose tissues the fat tissues and how panchakarma brings uh, those toxins into the GI tract uh, and why that's important in order to release totally. Um, and talk about some of the specific procedures and treatments that you're using in panchakarma, which specifically are oleation and even the, the ghee that you do before panchakarma. Yeah, in terms and the of the castor oil ghee. cleanse. Yeah, we are using um, so the ghee, you are giving oil, you are doing a castor oil cleanse to release a lot of gunk that is in the liver, in the biliary tract. You are using a lot of herbs that stimulate the liver. We are using bitter pungent spices like simple cumin, coriander, fennel, ginger is often used. A gentle amount of fasting, skipping evening meals, making your evening meals light, some freshly squeezed juices, maybe some blended juices and soups, drinking plenty of hot water, herbal teas, even using herbs like like trifala, aloe vera, ginger tea, neem, manjishtha, guruji. And these herbs are what we call them as prebiotics. They're prebiotics which are very conducive. And what we know of microbiome science right now is you don't want to engage into a cleansing which depletes the microbiome. So you are giving these herbs and foods which are very potent prebiotics. They cultivate a healthy gut flora without damaging and wiping it out. And that is so intelligent. Even before we knew about the microbiome, Ayurveda has been engaging into using these prebiotics with the combination of ghee, which is so much of butrates that we have in these oils with the combination of the fat and the herbs and the potency of the food grade herbal food supplement that are used in that way. So you tonify, you nurture, you nourish the system in pre-panchakarma. And when you engage them, you actually 
allow the oil massage and there are so many different types of abhyangas udvartanas utsadanas um, different types of marma abhyangas and uh, oils that we use for internal oleation we can use sesame oil we can use olive oil coconut oil flax oil we use uh, internally ghee herbalized ghee maybe pipli sticks even sesame oil we combine good grade seeds like sesame flax all in powdered gel forms to create these internal uh, oleating food that people consume and oil is has the quality because it's spread easily through the dhatu through the tissue because of their fluidity and quick absorption and when the oil is saturating the system they liquefy all the fat soluble toxins they work like soap the action is like saponification sure. the saponification is is it reacts with ama and the doshas begin to lose it right. it's exactly the same logic why you use um engine oil you take your car to change its oil lube and filter every 5 <laughs> to 10000 miles right okay. and you have to and you should be doing it regularly you should be doing it otherwise you'll be burning the engine if you don't right. change the oil you are damaging the car and the engine so you are yeah. replenishing the oil you are removing the old gunky oil and you are replenishing it with with good clean organic healthy cold pressed oil Sure. and it enhances the flow and as i gave you the example of honey now the doshas are coming out and with the oil it kind of creates a funnel it enhances the flow without obstruction and the lubricating quality protect the dhatus from the site of ama and the dosha separation the oleating quality is very soothing for vata because vata is the king of dosha it is the only dosha which is responsible for all movement of the toxins going through the cells and the toxins coming out of cell it's governed by vata so of course and it's it's responsible for most of the disease, the majority of the diseases is my understanding as well so um i know that pancha karma actually means five actions so when someone comes to your clinic i know it's going to be different in the us than in india Yeah. but when somebody comes to your clinic and let's say they're going to be doing a 7 day pancha karma um so what does it typically look like what are these five actions that are happening <clears throat> i know that we're we're restricted somewhat in the us as to what we can do but what what is well, what, what does it look specific. like for a client who wants pancha to pancha karma uh, simply means five actions pancha sure. means five karma means actions yeah. pancha karma is vaman virechan nasya basti and rakta moksha these are the five actions vamana is induced vomiting it's a with specific herb you induce vomiting virechana is a, a cleansing purgation strong purgation laxative quality which um, has a, a cleansing effect for the entire gi tract then nasya is putting herbalized oil drops juices in the nostrils for the cleansing of the sinuses and getting rid of the mucus that could be in there then basti which is enemas and enemas only cleansing purposes bastis also have a tonifying and nourishing quality about themselves so you can use variety of different herbs concoction decoctions oils herbalized oil enemas that we use and the last one is rakta mokshana which is blood letting where there were techniques described in ayurveda where the impurities in the blood which are giving rise to many skin conditions and diseases can be removed effectively by letting go of the impure blood trapped in different part of the body by using leeches by using um, general ways of removing blood so we are not allowed legally to do blood letting in this country because it is harm on the patient itself and vamana which sometimes you induce vomiting and can feel or mimic as if it's creating some harm or distress apart from that we are legally able to do virechana which is a cleanse that we often use castor oil we can do nasya we can put drops in the nose eyes ears we can do enemas um, and many allied pre and panchakarma treatment which includes various massages steam treatments and things like that so when people come 
they actually prepare for two, three, four weeks beforehand with the diet, lifestyle, drinking a special kind of a tea for a certain amount of days, and then do a castor oil cleanse at home. So they take about two to three tablespoons of castor oil early in the morning on a Sunday, mixing it with some orange juice or some hot water, and then stay indoors and follow a liquid diet that day. So they have some explosive bowel movements, which is four, five, six, which get rid of some impurities. So you're getting rid of some impurities that are already trickling in even before they come for in-house treatment. And when they come for in-house treatment, they receive synchronized massages. There are two therapists which are giving them oleation with hot oil, herbalized oil that is massaged all over the body. Then pouring of the oil on the third eye, which is Shirodhara, which is a very relaxing, calming treatment that they receive on the first day. And they receive an oil enema. We always start the treatment with an oil enema and we always end the treatment with an oil enema. So oleation softens everything and reduces uh, the, the, the dryness that can happen in the gut. So the body is preparing for detoxification. Second day when they come, they get a different kind of a scrub with some herbal powders, with different kind of oil. They're exposed to some steam treatments. They are receiving uh, a steam tent treatment where they are creating oil and the steam, which is Nehana and Svedana, which reduces a lot of blockages in the cells and tissues, which allow the body to initiate detoxification. And that day they get a much bigger enema, which is about 10 times bigger than the first day, which is like a big flood, which washes out. Every day we are giving specific food. They eat khichdi only, they eat steamed vegetables. We give them good amount of ghee to eat with that food. They are observing a very quiet, daily routine, meditate, meditation, gentle stretch, walk, yoga, doing some self-reflective journaling. Third day could be different treatments or drops in the nose, maybe kati basti, griva basti, pindasveda. So there are so many different treatments that are lined up and it takes about three hours. As a Vaidya, as doctor, we see them every day before and after the treatment. We feel the pulse, we look at their tongue, we talk to them, we give them specific exercise for them to reflect upon their life uh, journey so far, have engaged them into writing. Um, there's a big emotional release that happens during those days also. So people go through those for five, seven days and they come out on the other end of the tunnel feeling completely completely different. You can see that, they can feel it, and they feel as if there's something has happened deep inside in which they have gotten rid of a lot of fear, phobias, insecurities, right. guilt that are yeah. stuck in the carpet yeah. of the body. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Um, I want to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about the emotional, emotional release as well, but um, I do want to read a passage from your book. Thank you for reviewing you know, what happens at your clinic in terms of panchakarma and the treatments. Um, but specifically the power of silence. Um, I kind of chuckled in your book because for some clients, you actually prescribed silence, you know, while they were uh, at your clinic. Um, and this is a quote from your book. It's a, little, it's a little bit unusual to ask people to remain silent during the panchakarma treatments. And yet it can be surprisingly effective for the right person. Some people are so busy and have so much chatter in their heads that they can't think straight. They can't experience their moment to moment lives. And that means they can't commune with the body. When someone like this is plunged into silence, they can't use speech to mold the world around them and to bend others to their will. At first they feel helpless, but gradually they become vulnerable and open to new ideas. They become aware of old thoughts and previous hurts they have been pushing away. It's very purifying to put away words for a period of time and let the body and the subconscious do the talking. This silence coupled with journaling can bring startling insights. So I'd like you to comment on the power of silence, maybe give an example or two of clients who you've treated uh, and also the power of journaling, which you refer to quite a bit as well. Well, you know a little bit about Ayurveda and we look at sure. the body differently than what anatomy and physiology we talk about. We look at the body as three concentric circles. 
The outer circle is called a sthula sharir, which is the grosser part of the body, or the annamai kosha that you right. talked about, which is governed by food. It's bones, <laughs> muscles, tissue, tendons, organs, organ system. It's all sthula sharir. Just underneath the stool sharir is the sukshma sharir, subtle body, which is related with your mind, emotions, feelings, thoughts, sensory experiences. And underneath that sukshma sharir or the subtle body is the causal body, is the current sharir, is the field of consciousness, is the field of atma, is the field of spirituality, the greater self with capital S. So we identify the body as three concentric circles. And as you are polishing, rubbing, purifying, cleansing, detoxifying the physical body, if you engage into a journey with silence into the subtle body, and during the moment of silence, when you talk, allow the body to talk to them, they don't talk to anyone, but allow the subtle body to talk to them. You are engaging in their mind and intellect and ego to work things out with emotional reactivity, negative thought, negative thought patterns, early childhood experience, some old fears, anxieties, grievances, resentments, wandering of the mind, over-intellectualizing because people love to talk and they chat and talk so much that they glorify it what they're feeling completely different. And when you block that vent of talking, not, and you are just thinking and allowing yourself, they start crying. Immediately they start feeling so helpless that they are not using their, their polished words to express, but just to feel. And just mm -hmm. to feel, start releasing an emotional catharsis happens because the body is going through it already. Now you engage the mind. And together, it can be a very powerful experience. And I think that's the word meaning of panchakarma to a certain extent. Jokingly, I tell my patients, just don't worry about what panchakarma is come my way and I'm going to punch the karma out of you. <laughs> and that punching of the karma is, is the deep, seated work in your mind and emotions. And along with nutrition and rest and exercise, you cultivate an attitude of self-awareness, self-reflection through meditation so that they can go back to their good old life with some conscious choices. And most importantly, and Mercy used to say this always, that you engage them into an experience of recognizing the difference between perceptual and actual. Mm. What is Maya, what is illusion and what is real? If you can even give them a glimpse of that innermost layer of Karanchari during this time, it is a spiritual rejuvenation treatment. Right. That's what Panchakarma right. is all about. Sure. Well, a glimpse can start them on the path. So that's that's uh, that's wonderful. Um, and I know you've said quite a bit in your book about the emotions getting, our emotions and old traumas getting lodged in the tissues. I use the term called issues in your tissues. Right. Because those patterns that you unconsciously developed earlier to become mm -hmm. aggressive, to become more going into your shell or to become fearful or to carry a guilt or fear uh, was all developed even before you started realizing. And you mm -hmm. start acting that way without realizing that you act this way because of this. And as you give yourself some buffering chance to look back, step back, and then reflect and get rid of those old cobwebs or the blocks, right. you start allowing the flow of prana, the flow of intelligence to restore the energy and getting over the fear of losing something. Mm. It's all ignorance. It's all dispelling ignorance. These treatments are so powerful and so well designed that they are meant for people to really open up, to lead an awakened life, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and emotionally at the same time. And mm. during those times, there's there's almost an incubation time that you get to really sit and reflect and meditate upon what is needed. What is serving you? What is not serving you? How can you get rid of the clutter in life? 
And if you can create this kind of mindful spaces twice a year, thrice a year, even once a year, for God's sake, it's your, you're helping your body to live longer and healthier and happier and with a more purposeful life, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's what I'm hearing is that there's an opportunity for a more purposeful life. Um, also in your book, you describe that many people will, you know, really during the Panchakarma, they, they're going through profound transformation um, and, you know, they want to change their life totally. And you caution against doing anything quickly or rashly. Could you talk about that or? Well, it means many times people come out and they think that uh, they have to divorce their spouse and get rid of this marriage mm -hmm. or go out and quit the job and it's mm -hmm. too stressful. And I tell them that you're taking a different person mm -hmm. with you now to be in the same workspace where you will have a different attitude to deal with it. You look at your own marriage differently with a different set because your body is much more clear, pure, refined, subtle, awake. Right. And you give yourself some chance to look at it and act differently because it's not a conditioned reactive response. Now it's much more chosen and realize that what is in that, that really affects you and bugs you. And whether you have the courage to deal with it, to talk about it, to manage it or to discuss it. And when they yeah. do, they come back pleasantly surprised. They say, right. I, had a, right. I had a chat with my boss and we sorted out over things and I actually feel that I'm getting the recognition and the appreciation I want. And I think I got a raise and it was really good that instead of going and submitting my resignation, I asked for some time and discussed it without fear and prejudice and it kind of changed my whole atmosphere in the workplace. Same in the marriage, same in some other situation. Right. Or sell your house and move to a smaller town. Because during Panchakrama, there's so much of things. I, I tell them, the analogy I give them is like, when you're cleaning a house, there's a lot of dust that is flying. And right. you feel that the house is dusty when you're cleaning it. But maybe an hour or two later, when that dust settles down, you feel cleaner. And you have to wait for a couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks post Panchakarma for the dust to settle down. So it's really, I like that. So you're, you're really encouraging them to consider embodying their existing life. Um, Absolutely. In, you can't run away from every experience. In their new is, way. Yeah. But... When things settled, if changes are required, you're you're not you're not a, you know certainly they can entertain that. And uh, I, I practice, as you said earlier, medical astrology. So I have their date, place, and time of birth. We look at their astrological chart, their planetary trends, timings, their rising sign, their sun sign, their moon sign, their strength, their weakness, their emotional nature. We look at their life on a timeline. What has happened to you in the last fifty years? Where were you from here to there, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, first marriage, second marriage, this, that. We look at the whole life on a spectrum scale and give them so many pointers that they feel really empowered to go back as if someone introduced them to themselves. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're providing your clients with that insight as well in terms of every day, every their day. relation to the, to, to the larger and broader environment, the cosmos. And yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, I loved um, just the words that you described to um, regarding pancha, pancha karma in terms of um, dispelling ignorance and awakening. And, you know, this is a real opportunity for patients and clients. Um, and it's much more than a cleanse. It's, it's a detox on so many levels. Um, we're going to get ready to conclude, but are there any anecdotal stories that you'd like to share something well, that's really there are um, so many, spoken to you? I, so many of them but i can tell you that there are people who not only get rid of their armor restore flexibility joints i have so many athletes who come to me i have so many hollywood celebrities who come to me mm -hmm. and they're stuck with the busyness of life they're stuck with the busyness of life which is generating a lot of heat inflammation 
blockages and slowly we cool it down. We get rid of the pent up inflammation. We release the impurities, re-energize the system. There's a chronic exhaustion that everybody's complaining about, adrenal exhaustion, and they're feeling depleted, devitalized. And you slowly build their system. The nervous system becomes a little bit more resilient. They're actually excited to go back and be even more productive in that. And I think I don't, I don't want them to think as if panchakarma is, is too slow and it's too much of, of a time commitment for, for them to waste that many days to do something. It's if you want to send the arrow forward, you have to hold it back. And the longer you hold it back, the farther it's going to get. So that is the time that you're going inward for a better outward life. And we see that day in and day out with many of our clients. Yeah, that's a beautiful image. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Suhas. Um, wonderful. Well, where can our viewers and listeners find you? Uh, your website, social media Thank channels, you. anything else? Yeah, so they can contact us at ayurvedichealing.net, A-Y-U-R-V-E-D-I-C, healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G.net. Or they can call our number at 831-462-3776, 831-462-3776. And that's for um, your Panchakarma, your, Panchakarma your healing Clinic. institute in... Um, you can always find this book Santa on Cruz. Amazon. Your book, Panchakarma, the Ayurvedic Art and Science of Detoxification and Rejuvenation. And I will include a link to that in the show notes as well. So, Awesome. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for spending the time today. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Take care.